Hello everybody, Admiral Ashir here, and I'm going to go through my Tier 5 easy build uh, for a level 65 character, because if you're Tier 5, you're probably level 65, and you're going to need to get into reputations at this point. And this build can be made without spending any money, technically, because it's all reputation or things that you get from the game. The ship itself is the Star Cruiser Tier 5. Uh, it's a pretty well-rounded ship with almost the same specs as a Tier 6 ship. So it's a pretty good, well-rounded vessel. Nothing special about it, but once you get to level 65, you guys have noticed that you have reputation down here, and you'll start working on these levels of each reputation. And some of these things that I'm going to talk about in the equipment will come from these, and I'll call them reputation. Otherwise, I'll explain the mission that they came from. Here's the ship, the USS Rook. This first weapon is a dual disruptor from the Discovery set. Now you can make the disruptor instead of the phaser once you get to tier 6 in that. Um, otherwise you could do phaser. Um, I like disruptor because I'm doing a full disruptor build. Here's a biomolecular dual beam bank. Um, it's also a disruptor and you get that through the Omega or the Undine uh, reputation boxes. Not necessarily from building it that I got just as a prize from a box. Uh, Nausicaan Disruptor Beam Array is from the first mission in New Horizons with the Lucari. You'd have to play the mission three times over and you can get the full set because it is a three-piece set and I like to have it because this third thing on here it adds an extra 28.5% disruptor damage and that's to every disruptor on my ship plus 50 starship hull penetration so that comes in really handy there. Here we have the Terran Task Force Photon Torpedo, and that is made in the Terran Dis Rep and the Terran Task Force Disruptor Beam on the back that is also made at the Terran Rep. Here is a Nausicaan Energy Torpedo, that first mission again, and New Frontiers. Uh, kinetic Cutting Beam is made from the Omega Reputation, and the House Martok Disruptor is from the mission Brushfire. Uh, I go through that twice to get the other, the console, which we'll get to when we get on the other side. Here's this satellite turret. These are devices, things that you consume that just drops it off in space, shoots. There's a shield battery. This is the Nimbus Pirate distress call, distress call for reinforcements, and you get that from doing the entire uh, Nimbus 3 story arc. Uh, the Delta Real Alliance reinforcements you get through the Delta missions that you do in the story. Here, is my shield. It's I use three parts of the Discovery. So this is one, the sh Discovery Shield, the Discovery Deflector, and the Discovery Warp Engine. Because once you have three, on top of the other things that you get, plus the hull regeneration there, you get my CLA Lightning that flashes out at every new target. On the Impulse Engine, I just have this one, and it is from the Competitive War Games Reputation. It makes your ship really fast, and every time you use, you know, like high uh, yield torpedo or uh, overload, beam overload, torpedo spread, things like that, it makes you go even faster. So fast, fast, fast turn, best for speed engine. Down here in the tactical is Lorca's custom cot fire controls. It's also from the Discovery Rep. This is something that you can get from a fleet store that's a vulnerability locator and there's two different kinds of there's a locator and there is the exploiter the locator is the one that gives you critical chance and the exploiter is the one that gives you critical severity i chose the chance on this build because there are only two tactical consoles and if i'm going to put anything down there it's going to be extra chance uh, let's see the exotic particle field exciter uh, it raises your EPG, which helps out science abilities. This is the assimilated module. Oh, that, by the way, the exotic particle field exciter is uh, just a normal thing that you can get through the course of the game, or you can construct one with your R&D school in science. The assimilated module is from the Omega reputation, and that adds critical chance and severity. And let's see, here we have that third piece of the Nausicaan, and that that adds more damage 
and power transfer. I forgot to tell you that Lorca's custom controls uh, I put on every ship because look at the critical chance plus 3.9 plus wa po weapon power setting and 157.5 starship shield penetration. So if you want to be able to get things to wipe out people's shields in one shot, always have Lorca's custom fire controls as a base. All right up here in the engineering section, I've got Neutronium Alley because it covers a lot of stuff and this one is actually epic so you get another piece which this one is starship hull capacity i think it's very important for a tier 5 ship to have as much plus starship hull capacity as you can find which is why i have my rcs's which are things that you can find or build these two things find or build in the game this one increases your flight turn rate a must for a cruiser uh, and it increases hull capacity this one is an enhanced RCS accelerator, which basically does the same thing, except for if you look at the difference here, this one adds capacity by a plus, and this one adds it by a percent. They go well together because that goes onto the base, and this, and this increases the base. So that's another 52.5 flight turn rate, so you're going to be turning better. And you can get this particular console also through the fleet. House Martok Defensive Configuration is the other part of that Martok set so that you get all of these and it's another turn rate thing. Plus, since I've got the 360 degree weapon on, it also gets set 2 which is plus 2.5 more critical chance and 15 accuracy. Very important uh, once, once you start getting into the battles here. Now let me show you the way I've got some of this set up here. So if we go up to four clicks, we start flying and then we can look at the ship and the stats because you have to go all the way up to your speed to get your stats correct here. This ship is a tier five. It's not the best on accuracy, but its crit chance is over 20. Its crit severity is up to 92. Defense is pretty good with 91, but a hull 87,278 is a great hull for a tier five ship. And look at all of those resistances over there. They, they, uh, they really stack up. And then you got flight speed of 37.86 and 22.6 degrees per second turn rate. That's good for a cruiser. Uh, generally, cruisers are harder to turn. Um, let's look at the way I've got some of my slots set up here. If you look at the lower right of the screen there. You see my circle button. I like to keep beam overload so that I only press that when I get to a target. The other thing I've got here is torpedoes high yield one, and that auto executes there. Triangle button, I've got emergency power to weapons because I like it there. And I have these other engineering up here. We've got directed energy modulation. We've got reserve shield polarity. That's an important thing for defense. And I've got it whenever possible so that it just keeps going as much as it can uh, when you get into battle. Here is engineering team one, uh, which is at healing. And I've got that so that its uh, health is less than or equal to 50%. So it kicks in when it needs to. Now these are called auxiliary power to the emergency battery, aux to bat and I've got three of them on there and I will explain why when we get in and look at our duty officers. Alright, the square button is your science. In here I have jam targeting sensors which is actually a placate and it says it placates until I deal 21,600 damage to the jam target so they can't target me or hurt me until I do that much damage to them which ends up being pretty quickly in the ship actually. Polarized hull keeps tractor beams off you. And I like to put this one there because I, like I've said before, I like to be stealthy and sneaky as well as fast and stuff. This basically cloaks you and you cannot be seen while that's active. You cannot fire while it's active, but then you can turn it off. All right, I like my L2 button to be evasive maneuvers and I put other things on automatics for different reasons. And I'm an engineer, so I've got these things up here. And Miraculous Healing, or Miraculous Repair 3, which uh, brings your hull back up and your shields back up really quickly. All right, on my L1 on this build, I'm using Diversionary Tactics, which comes with something called Specialization. 
So let's go back in here. Now once you're level 65, you start working on your specializations here. For specializations, you pick the things that are going to work best for you. What I did here is intelligence officer as primary and strategist as secondary. Strategist secondary is what gave me that diversionary tactics. Intelligence officer, without these, with this seat at all in this cruiser, it gives me flanking and uh, defense and dodge. So not much else with that, but I use it in most of my builds, so that's why it's there. Um, in the traits here, once you get into the reputations, you'll start getting reputation, space reputation, and active reputation. Active reputation isn't as important, except for maybe uh, the quantum singularity manipulation, visual dampening field, and deploy sensor interference platform. Those are really good things to just have automatically go, and they will automatically go, and they, they help you out. Uh, these space reputation things. Uh, I like this one because it turns people's weapons offline when I do it with a critical hit. Precision, there's that plus five critical chance more. Critical deflection, which turns off other people's critical chance. And advanced engines, which increases my flight speed and turn rate. Now if you go to the fleet and you can purchase this last slot that's usually locked, but you can unlock it using fleet credits at the fleet. And I slotted advanced targeting system. There's an extra 20% critical severity. Um, for your personal space traits, I would stick to things that are, you know, elusive beam training for this build. You know, I use particle manipulator because it's got some science stuff on there. And grace under fire if you're an engineer because that cools down your miraculous repairs. Now, this is where your, those abilities that you saw on those wheels came from. This is how they're set up on this ship. Uh, so I have two engineers in here uh, per the seats. And this guy, that's where the mask energy signature came from, is this guy here. And the pretty standard with the tack and the uh, science slots. These ox to bat, though, what is that? You know, if you look on the forum for Yuki Nagato's build, he will explain Augs to Bat, and it is a really clever thing to do. And thank you to him, and thank you to Bebot for helping me get there. You can put three technicians in your active space roster, each 10% uh, after activating auxiliary power. Uh, all of your bridge officer power recharges are reduced. So that's 10, here's another 10, and here's another 10. You can have up to three of the same type. So you've got 30% cooldown of all your bridge officer abilities every time this is activated, which is also applicable to the other aux to bat things. So they will start going in succession as soon as, as they can. And then you get, they get going in a loop, and it cools down these other abilities faster. So just to show you what it looks like in action, really quick, this is set to Elite. So here is the ninth rule patrol on Elite with a Tier 5 ship built this way. All these things you can have gotten through the game or the reputations. Looks like there was a fight. Good to see you. We came here afraid so. Sorry to interrupt, but Take the, the Carter is ready to assist you. Out of the way. Lead the way. Head towards the Ferengi. Oh, he's cloaked. I like to activate my weapons here, turn around and start blasting. So this patrol is on Elite. So it takes a while to shoot these ships, and this is a Tier 5 ship. Holding its own. Pretty much taking these things down. 
That one was a frigate. Nice. Alright, get back in here. Oop, we got someone behind. We'll turn it around. See, every time I press that, boom, it goes faster. That's the competitive engine there. That Nausicaan torpedo goes out the back every now and then. And that golden sphere around the ship is your uh, reverse shield polarity. Oh, he has cloaked. That's okay, they're coming back. Emergency power weapon, beginning overload too. Now you might say, okay, Ashir, I have done this build, and I put all those things on there, but I don't have any yellows. Also, I can't do things like that. Some of those crits that you do are huge on that video, and I can't seem to get my ship to do that much damage to anything. Well, there might be a reason for that in some of the lingering things that I have. As you start getting bigger starships, you get starship traits. And this is the only thing that is not covered by that. Um, starship traits come from starships, and I have many starship traits slotted from other starships that I've had. In Tier 6, you get Mastery, and you get these all filled out, plus that last slot goes to or comes from the fleet. You have to get it from the fleet in order to unlock it, just like the space reputation. I'm just going to dump out of this patrol because they're annoying me, shooting me in the back. But as you notice, I'm still at 100% and my shields barely got scratched. So, not too worried. So I will report that mission. Pshoom. Okay. Greetings from beautiful Ryza. Love that summer event. Okay. Last. How did I get these leveled all the way up to gold? It seems impossible because when you're in here and you're trying to level something up and you go upgrade and it's just a rare or a very rare or even an uncommon or common and you sit there and you try and get these these universals or these improved tech uh, basic ones then it doesn't it costs dilithium and it takes forever when you have dilithium you should go to the dilithium store and look at special items here there's phoenix prize pack a single or buy 10 and when you get one of those here let me just grab one to show you you open it and you get a prize of some sort usually these uncommon prize token but you can get rare very rare ultra rare and epic epic gives you a ship ultra rare gives you a ship a tier 5 ship so those are both desirable this is the one most commonly you get is the uncommon you use the device and you go into the prize redemption for phoenix and here down in uncommon all the way down, not the very last one, but the second to last one is Phoenix Universal Tech Upgrade. And you trade all of them in for that one. You don't want anything else that's in here. And then, when you upgrade things, the tech upgrade here, Phoenix Universal Tech Upgrade, when you slot that, Boy, look at how far it goes, and that'll continue on because each one of those can take a level 12 almost all the way up through a 15 and give you a chance to get the next slot up each time you do it. So it might become, you know, ultra rare after, after very rare or very rare after rare, uh, etc. And that's how you get it up to gold. You use Phoenix Universal Tech Upgrades. Uh, from those prize packs from your dilithium. 
Uh, I know it's a long road, but it's worth it to get there. And then you can get the epic, and once you get to this level, you should be able to get through anything in the game and any of the TFOs, Task Force Operations. These all give you the marks to build up your reputation. So I would do these, and once you get into them, and you get a better equipment on your ship, you can change it by pressing triangle and going down here to different difficulties on advanced or elite. I would try advanced more often than elite, not because you can't handle it, but because hardly anyone ever queues up for elites. You could sit there all day waiting for a mission to go for elite because you need five players randomly, unless you're on a team, to do a full TFO. Well, I'll talk to you guys later next time. Do some more specific builds from some of the ships that I'd fly regularly. But thanks for listening. That's our T5 build.